G'day guys, welcome back to Salty Veins Fishing, Corey here. Today we uh, shot down to the local rock wall in hopes of catching a few herring. It was a pretty big storm that uh, hit Perth last night and it unfortunately brought quite a bit of seaweed and residual sort of wind uh, today. So it made filming a bit more difficult. So unfortunately, everything that I say in the video is too hard to hear at the voiceover. But basically, as I'm explaining here, that uh, we're down chasing herring, a bit of burly, just some pre-mixed stuff. But the best way to do it is to make your own, in my opinion. Just didn't have time. But um, keeping it simple, I was using a small metal slug, a little sort of Gamoku jig, um, single assist. And then on the uh, on the Nisa's rod and reel, just ran a small burly cage with a handful of burly. About a metre of six pound trace line and a size eight long shake hook. Piece of muley and it's just a simple sort of cast and real slow retrieve. As you can see here, it weren't casting too far, but uh, the issue we had was the surge had brought quite a bit of seaweed into the marina area of the rock wall and uh, it made fishing quite difficult to say the least. There was a lot of weed and it just wasn't working how I'd hoped. Uh, but the retrieve to use is just slow, real sort of concentrated. As you can see, the swell was up a little bit. The wind was just starting to pick up again. And we're down there about 11 o'clock, so plans had changed. We decided to move. Um, in the marina, there, there's a couple of nice little sort of jetties where you launch your boat. And uh, when launching my boat, I've noticed some good brim that hang underneath, so we decided to move to them bit more protected from the wind and the seaweed wasn't nowhere near as bad so it made it uh, a lot easier to sort of get into a few fish. I was casting there that little metal slug but uh, unfortunately it didn't come up too well. Harmony here was throwing in some burly keeping the fish entertained. I think she just enjoys getting her hands dirty more than anything but it's all part of the fun of fishing. Here I'm just twitching a little grub, a little two and a half inch grub around. The fish were following it, just couldn't get them to, to connect and, and, and hit it unfortunately. Turns out what we were seeing was actually a, a school of mullet or yellow eyed pilch. And while they were chasing the lure, they weren't actually hitting it. But uh, Harmony did alright with her first sort of cast, messing around and connects up nicely to a herring. There we are. Nice size Australian herring known as a Tommy Ruff on the East Coast. Runs away from it, a little bit scared. Still getting used to fish. A bit apprehensive, but we're getting there. So this herring, I'm assuming it had been caught previously and its mouth was damaged um, and actually split down the middle. Poor bugger. But it had healed and he'd been feeding, obviously. It was quite a healthy looking herring besides the uh, mouth deformity but we let him go anyway so the bait we were using was just the um, tips of the muley tail I'd had a bag left over from fishing the other night and the tails are the sort of the strongest part of the muley they don't seem to go as mushy as the rest so it's good when fishing for small fish just to use that last tail section and the way I sort of fit it to the hooks is just to start at the very base of the tail Thread from the skin side first, out through the meat and back through. Try and get on as many times as possible, depending on the size that you cut. But uh, there you can see there, it's pretty uh, pretty nice. So, the burly cage was sinking a bit too quick and we weren't having a cast because all the fish were sitting just under the jetty. So I removed it and just stayed with the uh, swivel and single hook. The idea behind that 
is the more natural the bait looks when sinking, the more chance you have of fish wanting to eat it. So lighter lines, little to no weight, um, is the best way to go, especially fishing for things like herring and, and whiting, brim again, all those sorts of things. The, the lighter and more natural, the more chance for hookups. So you can see here that the, we weren't even casting, we're just dropping over the side of the jetty and the, the, the bigger fish were actually hiding under the jetty and there was a large school of small uh, mullet just sitting off, just probably, yeah, where Harmony was throwing the belly there and they were just sort of being a menace really, <laughs> destroying the baits but it was entertaining to watch Right now I'm just cubing up a muley, so the idea here is to just slowly introduce parts of the uh, the bait you're using to the water. Gets the fish sort of feeding and more used to eating that type of bait when you put your, yours in the water. As you can see here, a nice yellow eye pilch took a liking to the muley fillet. Now these things make exceptional bait, so these ones are coming home with us and uh, I'm going to take them to Exmouth at the end of July. Hopefully turn them into something a bit more substantial. As you can see here, there's that school of mullet I was talking about. They were just ravenous. Managed to hook one, but unfortunately, he dropped off just, just at the edge of the jetty. And then the dreaded blowies moved in. Luckily they weren't too much of a pain, but this is the thing with burlying, you know, it's bound to happen, they'll eventually turn up, you know, any of the marinas and rock walls are going to hold a, a fair share of, of blowies, they're a bit of a pain, but that's where using lures comes in handy, small soft plastics and metal lures, chasing herring and tailor and, and skippy off the rock walls or jetties, it just minimises the bycatch of blowfish, but look, these things are a part of the natural environment and, and the ecosystem and they deserve to stay alive, so I always return them. As you can see, I was just letting the baits under the jetty, and if you just notice them, one of the mullet actually followed the bait to the surface and come back around and ate it. And there we are there. I was lucky to land this one, actually, because he fell off the hook. Almost lost him. Again, you know, these, these yellow eye pilch are just perfect bait size. This one's actually been attacked by something. You can see several little teeth marks on its side, so whether a, a small shark or, or a dolphin or something, or even maybe a bigger fish itself has tried to grab him at some point. The, uh, the fish were feeding right next to the jetty and, and out the surface so I took the chance to dunk their GoPro and try and get a bit of footage but the water was real murky which I think actually allowed me to, to film it because they, if it had been clear they wouldn't have come anywhere near as close to the GoPro in my hand as they did. Yeah. 
This is where, you know, a cast net or, or even a prawn net just to dip in and scoop out would have been handy to get a good load of bait, but, uh, you know, we're not too greedy. Poor bugger knocks his head on the jetty. Another blowfish for good measure. This one got the perfect release. Give him a 2.5 for the dive. So we ended up with just with eight yellow eye pilch, and then I come home and cry vacked them in uh, preparation for Xmouth, so that's that, but uh, no, thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, and if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up with Salty Veins Fishing, until next time, catch you later.